We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody. This is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show. And today, we're going to say it's January 9th. Since we have so many videos up here. And uh, Angela has... We've been on a juice feast for how long? Well... If it's January the 9th, then it's day 25. Day 25. And you've been dying to get these wonderful guests on our show lately. Mm-hmm. We have a very special guest for you today. We are speaking with the king and queen of Juice Feasting themselves. <sighs> David and Katrina Rainishek. And the princess. Oh, the little princess. princess. Six months old, Sophia. Hello. And we actually Hi. juice feasted in preparation for conception. Wow. Of Sophia. And after, let's see, I did 70 days, and Katrina juice feasted for like 89 days, and four months later we conceived. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations, so, you guys. And there are some Thank folks you. out there who are starting to do that and actually using juice feasting as, as a good preparation for, for conception, just to kind of clear everything out and to spiritually, emotionally, mentally kind of orient to allowing something new and kind of releasing and letting something new and wonderful and amazing in. Yay. I bet your lives have been transformed since that wonderful, beautiful creation there. Yes. Yeah. More fully than you could ever understand. <laughs> Until you just do it. Until you do it. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. I mean, we thought we knew, you know, a lot about what parenting was and you can kind of intellectualize about it, but there's definitely something about just doing it. Just like all things, just mm -hmm. like all things. But um, I, I described it as, it's like you are, you're understanding that you are shifting all of your love or encapsulating through your love another being. And that being is always there. And so it's like this persistent witness state or this, per, this constant consciousness mm -hmm. that's aware of this other being that's so close to you. And I think beyond the sleep and the diapers and, you know, Katrina adjusting from, you know, childbirth and all that, I think that's actually the biggest adjustment is just the constant, persistent awareness wow. that you are here to offer all of your love to this other person. It's a, it's a big deal. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's been really exciting. It is really exciting. That's and she's, um, she's a beauty. She is indeed. <laughs> All right, so um, our intention for this interview today was, uh, you know, we've been juice feasting for 20-something days now, and we've just been doing green juice feasting, which we've never done before, and we wanted to speak with the Rain Shakes and ask them a load of questions about juice feasting, so I put the message out there on my blog, send us in any questions that you want to have answered by the Juicy King, Queen, and Princess, and we have about 20 questions here for you guys. So we're going to try and wriggle through them pretty quickly. Um, so, all right, let's get going. This all right. is Christina, who is a doula. And she's also a student midwife. And she says... Um, we love doulas! <laughs> As a result of this lifestyle, she is living life on call which might mean she's getting calls in the middle of the night, she's all night by a laboring woman's side. Um, yeah. When I don't have time to juice before going, and there is the possibility of me being gone for a whole day, what would be your best suggestion for juice feasting in this situation? What about taking containers of coconut water with green powder? Would that be acceptable? What about the master cleanser? Any other suggestions? Yeah, good. Bring your juicer and make juice for the laboring mama and have it there with her. Nice. Although when I was in labor, I didn't want anything, but <laughs> I think it's an amazing support food for your support team while you're in labor. The midwife would probably love it as well. But yeah, you could also do things like coconut water with green powders, making juice before you go if there's any time, like even if you have time to make yourself two quarts. And bringing your blender, although, you know, blending food while a woman is in labor is you'd have to have a, You'd have to have a room, like, at the end of the house or, or an additional house where you could do it. But you could yeah. do that. Master cleanser is good in a pinch. I, I don't really suggest it long term. I think we've kind of moved beyond the age of the master cleanser. 
because we can get all the benefits of master cleanser by doing green vegetable juice and throwing some cayenne in there. So, um, you know, making your juice in a high speed blender or doing it like in the Huron juicer, which you guys have brought to everybody's attention is awesome. It doesn't take very long and juice that's made and you fill it all the way up in your jar right to the top and cap that off it'll last for like 18 hours or so i mean it won't be as vibrant as it was coming right out of the juicer but it's not going to harm you so you can make juice well in advance and keep it there in the fridge and just keep accessing that um so you should be able to work around that but yeah if you could bring a vitamix and make stuff for the mama that'd be awesome nice yeah, yeah. thank you all right. Yeah, bring the juicer and make juice. <laughs> Next up is Mary, and she said, "What is the current um, protocol recommended for juice feast breaking?" Great, green smoothies. We had prunes for a long time. Everybody saw you, Angela, break <laughs> on prunes. Mm -hmm. And as wonderful as you are, the prune aspect itself very unsexy. Actually, I mean, just, you know. <laughs> Soaked prunes, not terribly exciting, and higher on the glycemic index. A lot of us coming out of a juice feast wanting to be very mindful of the glycemic index of the things we take in, either just as a matter of practice or because our situation requires that. And so I like the green smoothie better. And we, we started looking at that with the 2008 Global Juice Feast. And green smoothie is much more sexy. You can make it as high or low on the glycemic index as you want. It's got a lot of nice fiber in it, so it accomplishes what the prunes do. But the prunes were just like blowing right out the other end for some people. It was it was like working too well. So low glycemic or moderate glycemic index green smoothies to break. And you could throw a couple of prunes in there if you want. It's perfect. And um, much, much better. And um, the, the carbohydrate goes into your system in a more even manner. And... Our approach on the juice feast is to establish the practice of doing green smoothies every day, preferably for breakfast. So it's a great way, really sexy, exciting way of breaking out and doing it in a way that you that you like. Because you might want kale or parsley, it may be papaya for you, whatever. So you can make the green smoothie exactly the way that you want it. So it works for everybody. So that's it. There are, other, there are other aspects of the protocol, but they haven't changed. They haven't changed, and that involves probiotics. It involves ginger and um, white oak bark. White oak bark's an astringent herb, which shrinks down the size of the colon in any place that it's expanded too much. You can find all that info on And it's all on juicefeasting.com. Juice That's right. Hmm. Great. Do you want to ask a question? How much does it cost to juice feast each day in the U.S.? That's from Gary F. <laughs> uh, as, as low as like 5 to $10 a day and as high as 30 to $35 a day, depending on where you live, the time of year, organic or non-organic, and the type of produce that you're getting. So parsley is going to cost more per pound than spinach does. So there's a lot of variables. One thing to keep in mind, probably you're spending 15 to $20 a day on food anyway. So if it costs $25 a day to juice feast, that's an investment of five additional dollars a day for all the benefits you get from juice feasting. So it's it's really inexpensive. I mean, if you ate McDonald's three squares a day, it'd be five to six bucks a time. You'd be up at 18 bucks a day on McDonald's. So $25 a day for some of the best food you've ever had. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Nice. Thank you. How do you juice on the road? That's from Carrie. You need a generator and a, and a quiet road. <laughs> because if the 18 wheelers are coming by really fast, it's okay. In the hotel, you just set your Vitamix or your high speed, whatever your high speed blender is, or your Huron juicer or whatever your juicer is right there in the hotel and you do it. Bring along a cooler, the larger, the largest cooler that you can and keep ice in it. If it's during the warm time of year and just bring your produce, get on Google maps and find out where your local organic market is. And get your stuff. Um, you can juice things like frozen blueberries, frozen raspberries, as part of what you do. Those are available in every grocery store everywhere in the country. And if you need to go non-organic because you're traveling and you just cannot find anything else, you're in just po Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.